Hello there and welcome to my video about cells and their structure and function, um, part of my general science series. So to start we're going to talk about cell structure and function. And to begin we need to know what cells are and they're the smallest living units and most are microscopic. Not all of them, but the majority of them are so small you need a microscope to see. The discovery of cells occurred in the mid 1600s by Robert Hooke, um, and he did that by looking at a sliver of cork, so something you'd put in like a bottle, um, and he saw rows of empty boxes when he was looking at it through a, microso uh, through a microscope. And so he coined the term cell to name those things. Since Hooke discovered them, uh, many people have contributed to cell theory. Um, in 1839, Theodore Schwann and Matthias Schleiden all uh, decided that all living things must be made out of cells. And then 50 years later, Rudolf Virchow said that all cells have to come from other cells. So you can't just have cells poof into existence, they need to come from another cell. So um, cell theory is kind of like the, the, um, uh, the general ideas that embody what we think cells are. Um, and the first part of it is that all living things are made of cells. Um, the second part, of course, is that the smallest living unit of any structure and function of all organisms is the cell. So the cell is the smallest living unit of anything. And then all cells arise from pre-existing cells. Um, and this principle discarded the idea that cells just generate spontaneously. They just poof out of nowhere. Here are some different types of cells. Obviously, we've got really small ones, like, um, let's see, like the, the AIDS virus here is like 100 nanometers. That's pretty small. You need an electron microscope to see it. But um, the largest one on, the, on our little table here is a hen's egg. So an egg from a chicken, that's one single cell. And we can actually see that with our own eyes. We don't need a microscope to see an egg. So cells can be rather large, but most of them are um, small enough you would need a microscope to see. Cells have large surface area to volume ratios, uh, and that just means that they have a very large amount of, of surface area compared to the amount of volume inside of them. So there's lots of different places on the cell for things to be on the outside of it, but they're also very small and compact. Um, cells all cells have surrounding membranes, so things that keep everything inside of them and stuff out. They have protoplasm, which is this liquid that fills them up, and organelles, which uh, are the structures that make the cell function. And they also have some sort of control center with DNA. There are two major types of cells, the prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Prokaryotic cells were the first type of cells that were on Earth. Um, these are like bacteria and archaea, and they're very simple. Um, they've got their uh, cell wall, which keeps everything in and stuff out. Um, they've got what's called a flagellum, which is like a little tail that they move with. Their DNA is just kind of clumped together in the center. And then they have these things called ribosomes, which is good for making proteins. Um, so like I said, there's no membrane-bound nucleus, so there's no like capsule the DNA is kept in. Um, and organelles are not bound by membranes, so they kind of just flow freely in these cells. Eukaryotic cells, however, have a nucleus, so that means that all of their DNA and genetic information are kept in one single place. And these include fungi, protists, plants, and animal cells, and they possess many organelles which are mostly membrane-bound. This is a picture of what a general animal cell looks like. Um, as you can see, the large circle here is the uh, nucleus, which has our DNA and all that kind of stuff in it. And then all of our other organelles are outside of it, like ribosomes, mitochondria, the lysosome. And we'll talk about each one of these, so you don't have to worry about knowing all of them right away here, but we'll talk about each organelle as we go through. And here's a plant cell. As you can see, plant cells are different looking. They're more rectangular, and that's because they have cell walls instead of cell membranes, and they're much more rigid. So that means that they're more um, square-like, kind of like the cork things that uh, Robert Hooke saw when he first discovered cells. 
So like I said, organelles are like the cellular machinery. Like we have organs that keep us working. Cells have organelles. Um, and there are two different kinds. There's uh, organelles that are derived from membranes and there are organelles that are kind of like bacteria. Um, so they were derived from bacteria. Um, each cell has a lot of different things in it and we already kind of saw a picture of it. This is just kind of a nice little comparison of the two. So bacteria-like organelles are derived from symbiotic bacteria. So they have an, an ancient association um, with uh, with cells and how they work. And um, the theory that kind of uh, encapsulates this idea is that modern cells came from um, cells and symbiotic bacteria. So those two things worked together to create modern cells. Um, in all, every cell, there is a plasma membrane. It's the outer level of the cell. Um, and they contain the cell content. So it's it's a double layer of, of phospholipids and proteins that keeps stuff on the outside of the cell and things on the inside of the cell. Um, what's a phospholipid? Well, a phospholipid is a big molecule that has a, um, a head to it, which likes water, and a tail, which does not like water, which is made of fatty acids. And basically the water liking parts are on the inside and the outside and in the middle are the water not liking parts and that creates a little wall around all the contents of the cell and all these little purple bits in there those are different proteins that allow certain things to enter or exit the cells here's another good picture of the phospholipids they're polar which means that one end um, is hydrophilic and one is hydrophobic Hydrophilic meaning that they um, can interact with water, and hydrophobic meaning they do not. Uh, to move across the plasma membrane, there's there's certain ways that, that can be done. So if you want to move into a cell, um, there are a few molecules that are allowed to go in and out as they please, like water and carbon dioxide, ammonia, and oxygen. But there are other things that need to get into cells, like sugar, that need things to transport it in. So proteins are embedded in this in this wall. Um, and they allow things to move through into cells and out. Here are some instances of things that can go through. So here are the things that can that can go in and out as they please. Um, this thing can also go through as so a hydrocarbon, like uh, Vaseline is a hydrocarbon. Sugar, though, won't be able to get in, and neither will these ions. And so that's when they need special channels to get through. And so that's what these membrane proteins do. They're, they're basically like tunnels that allow things to go in and out. And they all have a receptor, and those receptors are what recognize what's trying to come in and come out and then allow it in or out. So it's kind of like a toll system. Um, when something's coming into the cell, it's going to check in at the receptor. The receptor's going to say, mm, we don't like you, you can't come in, or oh yes, of course, come on in. And then it can go through the, uh, the hole that it needs to go into to get into the cell. We're gonna skip over these guys. Okay, so cell walls are found in plants, fungi, and protists, and they're around that membrane we just talked about. So plants have the membrane, but they also have a cell wall. It's a lot thicker and a lot harder to get through. Um, what they're made of base is changes based on what's what they're what uh, kind of creature you're looking at. So plants are mostly made out of cellulose. Fungi use chitin. The cytoplasm. Um, is the viscous fluid that contains organelles, um, and it's a component of cytoplasm. Um, and they have all sorts of different filaments and fibers in it, as well as some fluids. And then the organelles kind of float in this cytoplasm. So this is where everything else is. It's all in this cytoplasm area. And then the cytoskeleton are the filaments and fibers that are holding everything into place. So there's three different types of fibers, filaments, tubules, and intermediates. And those things all do different things, like uh, support the different uh, proteins and what they're doing, or they might anchor organelles to the wall, or they might help move substances around. Here's an actual picture of the different filaments and microtubules from a microscope. And we're going to stop at cilia and flagellia, and then in the next episode, we'll do some more organelles. Thanks for watching.